basically grand finale before we ever go into advanced or pro features. Let's cover um, how we take this to the motif maker. Okay, so the first thing that you would do is uh, under the engrave menu, click on engraving defaults. Make sure that the selected driver is the mini motif maker. Uh, in this particular case, because we're using all the same size stones, uh, I don't need to use the engrave by color option. Uh, one item to quickly check here, uh, and this would be under initial setup. After you do this, you uh, wouldn't have to necessarily change it ever, ever again. Um, I'm just going to disable output tool pass and then re-enable it. Make sure that under the tool path options, output tool pass is the only option selected. Click OK. And uh, also under the engrave section here, make sure that you're engraving the sign plate. Okay. And what that, why that's important is because the position of the uh, artwork on the page will be respected when you output that file to the uh, mini motif maker. Okay. And uh, you can also, if you wanted to, enable the selected option, which means when I, I'm just going to click on, make sure you click on save default when you come out of this, and then click OK. Is say I only wanted to send the le the rightmost C, I would select it, and then when I go to engrave and then output, notice that it's it's only that C that is uh, being output to the machine. Why? What? Why is that an issue? Um, well, it's only it's just for uh, for preferences' sake. For what you know, you may only want to engrave or output one part. Okay. So, for example, if uh if all of the left object was SS6 and all of the right object was SS10, that's the reason we would use that. You would use that. Or you can also differentiate by color as well. Okay. Under the engrave by color option, I can I can output different colors at the same time. So theoretically, I could have motif board 1 would be all the red, motif board with a different size or, or different color would be all number black. And right. Okay, got it. Yeah, and if you go to engrave and then engraving defaults, and say we disable selected, click on save default and click OK, now everything will be output regardless of... Okay, we don't want that. Yeah. This In this particular case, if it would be all one color, it would be OK. Yes. If it would be three color, we'd, let's do it as if it were three color. So we want to send three different colors at three different times? Uh, yeah, I want three motif boards out of this design. Okay, so I'm going to engrave by color. Click on Save Default and then OK. And then I'm going to click on Engrave and then Output. And you'll notice under the Filter by Color window here, if I click on the arrow pointing down, it's showing me the three colors that are in the job. Okay. So if I highlight, say, red, and then click on Select, it's only um, displaying or only selecting the red colors in the job. Okay. And then to output it, I would just click on the Engrave uh, rotary icon here. Okay. Once I once that data has been sent to the machine, I can close out. I'm then again presented with the um, uh, go back and then go to engrave and then output, and then I can pick, for example, the blue color. Click on select, and it shows the the blues. Okay. And then if I want to output again, click on the router icon. And in this case, I don't have a machine connected to the, uh, the program, uh, to the computer. So when you have to say file, because most people will have this on a Vista notebook or an XP notebook, and the machine is taking a USB stick only? Okay, and then if that was the case, then I would click on engrave, and then engraving defaults. And again, this is a one-time setup. So once you've done this once, and it, and it fits along the work, fits into the workflow that you're actually you know, outputting to the machine, you don't you don't have to do this again. But okay. click on the setup button, click on port, set the port location to file. Uh, you can even set the default folder that you want the file to be created in. So say I'm going to my set path and I go to browse and say I'm always saving files on my C drive in a docs folder. Okay. You can do that. And then, you know, for uh, an engraving machine that requires an NC file as an output file, you can just put the extension in, click OK, and then click OK again. I'm going to save default and then click OK. And now when I go output, uh, again, I'm going to pick, maybe I'll pick black this time, and then click on select, and then click on the engraver icon, and now it's creating a file called untitled1.nc in my docs folder. So we call it uh, 
CC folder. The artwork would be CC. You can call the folder whatever you want to call it. Okay, so CC FS61. Uh, is this going to be the file name? Yeah. Okay, so CC. So what I would do here, I would select, like I'd have my customers listed here, right? Yeah. I'd have my Esso, my Shell, my Sally's Dance, Jude, whatever, right? And I would just save her artwork or his artwork underneath those folders and then label it appropriately. Right. Okay. And then click on Save, and then it generates the output file. Okay. Okay. And is it prompting me for the next one? Yeah, it then prompts you for the next color. And you'll notice that the, the color that's been processed has been, uh, it's got a hash mark through it, yeah. which indicates that it's already been sent to the machine. Okay. Okay. So then if I want to click on the red and click on Select, it, get, it creates the red, and then I can type in a new file name. Okay, perfect. And then click on Save. Excellent. Thank you.